And Victor, what's your uh, title at Honda Canada? Hi, uh, hi, Zach. Yeah, my name is uh, Victor too. I'm a senior product planner at Honda Canada. So you're in charge of all Honda products? Uh, yes. Yeah, so Honda's a brand. I For product planning, I'm basically in charge of the Civic. All right. So the Civic has been out for, what, five months now? And it's selling incredibly well, isn't it? That's right. Actually, we went on sale around um, November, and it's been doing really well, um, really exceeding our expectations. So uh, it's the number one compact car now? I mean, it has been for 18 years, so it kind of is a given that with a new model it would do well. That's right. It is the uh, number one car in 18 years in Canada. Um, we are uh, still ahead um, based on our three-month uh, sales. Uh, 20 day numbers are still very strong, and the dealerships are still, you know, the dealer group still very pumped up about the uh, new Civic. So the uh, recall that you had about the engine was was around what? There was some issue with a, a ring or something with the uh, piston. Yep, yep. Uh, there, there was an incident where um, the, the piston ring clip wasn't properly secured affected a temporary stop sale within Honda Canada and about 10,600 units was affected. Not a lot of that made it to the dealerships. We were able to uh, fix it and retrofit the, uh, the the units. And for those that did make it to the dealerships, we did issue a volunteer recall on those units. And some of the dealer repair kits are actually um, at the dealerships right now trying to get you know them up to speed. So it did, um, it, it was a temporary stop sale, uh, but that was only on the two liter engines. And th this is not, that uncommon with a brand new car, right? That you're going to have some issues, initial teething uh, issues. Uh, so what do you have to say to people? Like some people make comments, silly comments, like I wouldn't buy because there was a recall, but recalls are not uncommon. Yeah, um, that's correct. Exactly. The recalls are un uh, uncommon. It's really a Honda Canada's proactive approach. Um, in fact, there was actually no incident in Canada. Um, we are just very, being very proactive in terms of making sure that every single vehicle we deliver to our customers is the top, uh, you know, top notch in quality. All right. Uh, now, um, the Civic is built in Alliston, Ontario. That's your manufacturing plant north of Toronto. Now, explain how this was the lead plant and what that means. Um, obviously, the lead, lead plant for you know the entire world. Um, it says it, it basically means that you know Honda uh, Canada Manufacturing takes the lead in terms of development, making sure um, the, the engineering, the manufacturing part of it um, is applicable for the rest of the manufacturing facilities around the world. So being the lead plant, we obviously... Um, so, so you basically manufacture the car first, first, and then what you learn about the That's process, right. you share that. That's right. We actually manufacture the, the vehicle first, and we take the lessons learned uh, from the manufacturing process, and we apply it across all the different regions. So uh, that's a big honor. That's a big honor. There's a big responsibility at the same time. Uh, this is actually the first time uh, for Civic. Um, it's been done outside of Japan? That's right. That's right. So we're sitting in the coupe. This is your new model, which has just gone on sale. Um, so the coupe differs from the sedan how? Other than it has two doors. Yes, yes. But there, there's some engineering changes here, right? That's right. So there's some uh, engineering changes, um, especially just to, you know, you know, the, the, the fact that it's only got two doors. Mm -hmm. um, it's also made a lot sportier mm -hmm. uh, just from the styling itself. Um, overall dimension of the vehicle, it's a bit um, shorter. Mm -hmm. We took the uh, about 150 millimeters, 140 millimeters off the rear overhang, so about five and a half inches off the rear. Gives it a more- From, from, the, from the sedan. Versus the sedan, yes. Right. Um, in terms of height, it's about one inch lower. Kind of gives it that more sportier planted look, taking the, uh, the, the length off the rear overhang gives it that more um, you know, balanced look between the front wheels and the rear wheels. So it's a more muscular looking car. Right. But uh, underneath there's some changes as well. This is a different suspension. Yes, the suspension tuning has been tuned uh, to cater to the needs of the coupe buyers. And because the coupe also sits lower, about one inch lower versus the sedan, it actually has a lower center of gravity. Um, so when you're cornering, you know, together with the suspension tuning to it, the dampers, the rear dampers has been refined uh, for the coupe itself. Um, as well as the lower center of gravity, you definitely feel the uh, you know the difference in dynamics. Now you fought for some Canadian-only exclusive features in the car. So how did you get these features in versus the United States, for example? Um, a lot of what we do at Honda Canada, we you know we start with what the customer wants, right? And what are they asking for? Um, for instance, paddle shifters. What we you know we basically read uh, you know media reviews. We understand, we talk to the customers. We do customer surveys, and. One, there are two features that are unique for the Canadian marketplace. First off is the paddle shifters. 
Mm -hmm. um, this is made it to the CVT with the uh, 1.5 turbo. Uh, based on our customer research, we understand that you know they want more spirited driving, even though they made it to a CVT. So they want a paddle shift to split it. The other Canadian so you can't get that in the U.S. No, that's okay. only Canadian exclusive. Uh, the other Canadian exclusive feature is wireless charging. Uh, that one is a new technology. We look at the competition and what the competition is doing, uh, and we thought it would be best fit for our Canadian consumers. To well, as, a, as an Android user, um, this is uh, something that comes standard in many Android phones. Not yet in Apple. I think with the new seventh generation iPhone, they're probably going to have that. That's but right. like, like for example, we drove from Vancouver here to Whistler, and I put my phone there. It's right in front of the shifter, and all the way up here, it's charging. It's That's the right. best thing. And 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 I have the same thing at home. I have this little puck. I put it on there. Once you've had it, you're like. It's you got to have it everywhere. That's right. That's right. And and yes, you're right, uh, Zach. It is. Um, you know, it started to appear on Android phones, obviously. Because um, Android leads, you know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no, I have absolutely no comment on you know Android versus Apple. Uh, for for our phones, like we we have Apple iPhones, mm -hmm. um, and my my phone's actually retrofitted with a wireless charging case. Yeah, you can get a case, you can right? Get a case, right? Yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to bring it up. You know, I'm going to ask. You know what I'm going to ask for. Um, uh, the volume knob. There's yes. no volume knob. Yes. Now, it's not just Civic. It's uh, HRV, the new Pilot, and so on. Uh, you're hearing this from customers and reviewers, right? That's right. We, we are hearing it, and we take our, you know, our, comment, our customers' comments very serious, seriously, as well as from medias. Um, and we are, you know, every time we have, obviously, new vehicle development, we do raise the concern. Uh, we are speaking on behalf of a Canadian um, consumer. Um, so our role as a product planning is basically try to convince a development team that this, you know, that the volume knob is important. is important. Because so many people make comments on my videos and say, yeah. "Zach, you're just old. <laughs> you know, you don't need a volume knob." But I'm not the only old guy, I guess. Well, it, we we do offer, you know. Um, oh, I know it's there, yeah, it's, but it's I, I. But the thing is, when you look at the radio, you look. It looks like the heat knob is the yeah. volume knob. Yeah. So keep turning the heat up. Right. Yes, yes. So, so when you say to your product planning people back in Japan yep. and in the United States, do they say, oh, don't worry, we hear it too? Yep. So basically our role is to support um, you know, our, our feeling on what, what the vehicle should have with data, right? So from you know, reviewers such as yourself and your, your colleagues as well as the... So every time I mention this, it gets backed up. You send that to Japan? I definitely You say will. Zach Spencer wants a volume I definitely knock? will. Okay, good. That's, that's how we do it. That's how, it's, it's both, ultimately, it's you know, what the Canadian consumer wants and you represent... Um, you know, they're the voice of them, right? So It's funny because I was on a Cadillac trip uh, recently for their new flagship uh, mm -hmm. car called the CT6, mm -hmm. and it too does not have a volume knob. And I mentioned it to their global product planning guy, and he yep. says, don't worry, a volume knob's coming. Can you make a statement here today? No. No, but You want to keep are, your job, Victor. That, that's right. right. <laughs> I, I, for a fact, I know we're, we, we did raise that. It, it has been acknowledged. Um, I cannot speak to what future product is coming down, but... We well, are well let's working on it. one future product that has been unveiled. It was shown at the New York Auto Show. Yep. Is the hatchback version, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, what's the timeline on that? Well, the uh, Civic Five Door or the uh, hatchback con uh, concept, or that you showed, that yeah. we showed, um, that is actually coming. Um, it's coming fall of this year, mm -hmm. um, and we're very excited to have that in our lineup. And so is the dealerships. And you have made the announcement that the turbo uh, will have an available manual. That's right. So starting with 17 mile year, uh, we will equip our manual transmission vehicles with a manual. Sorry, uh, the, the, the turbo, turbo will get the manual. That's right. Because you can get it with the two liter. That's right. Um, now the Honda sensing system, the advanced suite of safety features, mm -hmm. is it going to spread across more products? Uh, like in this car yep. with the coupe, you can get it from the base model uh, as an option, right? That's right. Now with the the sedan, you still have to buy a certain trim level in order to get it. Is that true? Um, th that is true. Um, so we first introduced a Honda Sensing uh, suite of safety and driver assistive feature on our CRV Touring model. Uh, that's a 15 mile year, um, what we call minor model change CRV. Um, so with the uh, pilot, we were able to offer that technology at our LX all wheel drive uh, level. So that's basically our entry level um, pilot, getting that. Right. It's available on that and it's standard across the board. For the Civic, we, we did offer the same thing, but we wanted to give uh, customers a choice. Uh, in terms of whether or not you want that safety package, we want to make it, you know, affordable. Uh, we want to give, you know, that that package available for basically everyone. Um, so, you know, for the so Civic. so every new iteration of car, you're making it available on a wider on on a lower because grade, you yeah. know Toyota announced they're going to have their system available on every car. Yes, I'm I'm actually kind of glad they did that. Um, it's so that we're not the only one. I mean, we're one of the first one to to the market with the Honda Sensing uh, suite. 
um, their technology is very similar to ours, and I'm glad actually to see that they're bringing that down. It's pushing standard. everybody along, right? It is. It's, it's the competitive nature, and, and the compact car segment is very, very competitive. And it, you know, seeing that that nature among our comp- you know, among our competition, it's very good. Now, in the center screen, you have what's called Lane Watch, right? Mm-hmm. A Honda Lane Watch, yeah. and when you turn the right signal on, yep. that uh, camera comes on underneath the right mirror. Yep. And that's a great feature. So when you're driving along, mm-hmm. you can actually have it on on the highway and keep it on, right? That's right. So, But what I would like, now I know because you're looking to the left for the left mirror, yep. that makes sense. Yep. But I would like to be able to turn that on when I'm parking. Because I live in the city mm-hmm. and I parallel park in front of my house. Yep. So I love the rear camera, but yep. I'd be, love to be able to push the button and turn that camera on so I can see the curb. Mm. Can you take that back to Japan? I definitely will. (laughs) Okay, so we want a volume knob, and we also want to have the Honda uh, Lane Watch watch available when you're backing up. Yep, that that is um, that is actually I've had the same feeling myself. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes when you're backing up, you you know you're like, oh, where's that curb, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But our our backup camera is a multi-angle camera. I understand that, but I want to be able to see the wheel, right? Because that's an expensive wheel to fix. Yep, yep, Um, yep. Definitely will. You know, that's uh, feedback that we're you know. All right. Well, apparently you're the conduit to head off. Office, so so that's good. All right, what else should I bring up while I'm here? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so there's going to be it's been announced. There's going to be SI versions and yes. an R as well, right? Yes. So is there a window of time where we can say when that could be coming? Is it 18, 20 months, 24 months? Um, in the past, uh, I think six months, we said it's coming in the next 18 months. Right. So, so it's just, within a year. It's within a year. Well, right. it's a year and a half. Uh, right. So so there will be SI versions of both the coupe and the. That's right. And will there be an SI uh, hatch? Um, we haven't made any official announcement on any. So is that uh, is that a no or is that a? That could be a maybe. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, good good chatting with you. I love this car. Uh, we drove it from Vancouver here up to Whistler early in the morning. There was very little traffic on the road, yeah. and it feels like a much more expensive car. I got to hand it to you with the turbocharged engine, the the tuning of the chassis, the quietness. Now the Civic was never known as a quiet car. It now is. Uh, the power that you have with the turbocharged engine, you feel like you're driving a forty thousand dollar car. So kudos to you on that. Thanks, thanks again. And on behalf of Honda Canada and as, as well as our dealership, you know we're obviously very very proud of this car. Uh, we did try to you know put as much content into it. Um, the, the coupe buyers is a very unique buyer. They tend to focus more on style um, and performance, and performance yeah. as well. So we do have the two engine options, another you know, 1.5 liter turbo for the more performance oriented as well as the base two liter. Um, ultimately, what we're trying to do is make it you know a truly epic Civic, um, and with that you know the con- obviously the continuation of a 19 year in a row. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you're hoping anyway. Well, we will. <laughs> Congratulations. Good, thanks good again. job, Nick. Thanks nice. Again. Thanks a lot. And thanks, thanks, Zach. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to watch a review of the Honda Civic Coupe. Click the picture on the left.